Let's consider uh, the conditions under which we have bipolar stability, bounded input, bounded output stability for a continuous single input, single output system that's also linear and time invariant. So such a system we can draw like this. It has some input and just uh, we'd call it, say, R of T. That's the reference value. And for now, we'll call it the same as the input. And the output is Y of T. And uh, we know that y of t can be written for such a system as, as this convolution, uh, g tau, uh, r of t minus tau d tau. And because it's causal, we can turn uh, this into 0. And so we get this to be integral 0 to infinity, g tau r t minus tau d tau. Now, we know that uh, this is a bounded input, so this value is always going to be less than some value, say, r max. So we can pull that out, and so this is going to be given, uh, it's going to be less than or equal to, so y of t at any point is upper bounded by r max integral 0 to infinity g tau uh, d tau. And uh, this in turn is. Uh, the behavior of this, in turn, depends on how uh, this value, g tau, behaves over time. In other words, in some sense, when you have Bible stability, we can sort of ignore the value of, uh, of the input as long as it's upper bounded by some value r max. Okay, so what does g tau look like? To see that, we should first figure out what, uh, how does, g, uh, let's look at this Laplace transform. So the Laplace transform of g tau is going to be g of s. And it turns out that for an LTI system, it can always be written in the form like this, b0 s to the m plus b1 s to the m minus 1 plus bm over uh, s to the n plus a1 s to the n minus 1 plus a n. So in other words, for an LTI system, the Laplace transform always looks at the, as the ratio of two polynomials. And then this can be written in terms of a partial uh, uh, fraction expansion. And uh, in doing this partial fraction expansion, we have to take into account the fact that this is a real system. It's an actual system. In other words, if it's a real system, then all of the values of g of s are going to be real. And so in the partial fraction expansion, the roots of the denominator polynomial, so this is the denominator polynomial D, the roots of this denominator polynomial are all going to be either real or complex conjugate. But they can't be complex. They have to be complex conjugate, otherwise we'll end up with a situation where the uh, real valued function g tau will have a complex values, and that's not allowed. So that bounds what is going to happen. And of course, this could be distinct or repeated. And so we have to look into sort of four cases, real, uh, distinct, real, repeated, complex conjugate, distinct, and complex conjugate, repeated. And so uh, we have to look at each of these separately. Now, let's look at real and distinct. So when you have a real distinct root, let's say alpha i, then the uh, we're going to get some, in the partial fraction expansion, we're going to get something like a i over s minus alpha i, because in partial fractions, we uh, essentially have a term where s minus alpha, uh, for each root, you're going to have something like this in the denominator. And a is some expression. And so uh, this is going to be corresponding, this is going to, an a, sorry, a is some expression independent of s. And so the corresponding time domain value when you go into inverse Laplace transform is going to be a i e to the alpha i t. And we can see that if alpha i is less than zero, so we're going to have a value that kind of goes down like that. If alpha is greater than zero, it goes up like that. So it's alpha i greater than zero, it's alpha i less than zero. And if you want the system value, if you want the value of uh, g of tau or g of t to be bounded, then we need to make sure that alpha i is going to be less than zero. And so that is the stability criterion 
that you're going to have for real distinct alpha a. What happens if you have complex conjugate roots? For the complex conjugate roots, we're going to have uh, the, uh, uh, sorry, and I should say, if, if alpha a is equal to zero, then the output is going to be constant. So it looks like this, rather than up or down. And this way, the integral of gt dt is going to be infinity, which means the system is going to be having uh, unbounded uh, integral, which means that this is going, to be, uh, is going to be unstable if alpha is equal to zero. So for alpha hi has to be strictly less than zero as the criterion for stability that we have over here. Okay, if we take complex conjugate roots, let's say the root is of the form alpha k plus beta k. Sorry, I should write that down properly. Alpha k plus uh, j uh, beta k. And then the, it's conjugate, which is going to be alpha k minus j beta k. Then it's going to have the uh, corresponding uh, Laplace transform of the form a k plus j b k over s minus alpha k plus j beta k oops beta k uh, plus a k minus j b k so these are two other values of the numerator and then these are conjugate values on top as it turns out s minus alpha k minus j beta k and if we take the Laplace inverse Laplace transform, we'll get something that looks like this, 2 e to the alpha k t a k cos beta t uh, minus b k sine beta t. 